you have said. Father, we worship you this morning. We'll give all the glory to you. We'll give all adoration to you. Lord, we thank you for this day because this is the day you have made and we shall rejoice in this day. Lord, we are gathered here today not unto man but unto you. For your word says when we gather in your name you shall be present and we thank you for your presence this morning. Lord, we commit this service into your hands, O oh Lord. We commit your servant who is going to minister unto you this morning. Lord, we ask and declare in the name of your son, Jesus, that every word that proceeds out of his mouth, O oh God, comes from your throne. And that, Lord, we shall see the manifestation of those words in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you. For those who trust in you will never be put to shame. The theme for today, Lord, is the siege is over. It is written in Ezekiel 21, verse 27. It says, I will overturn, overturn, overturn it, and it shall be no more. Until he come whose right it is, and I will give it him. The word of God says that he will overturn, overturn and overturn. We're going to do two prayer, we're going to have two prayer points concerning overturning. The first prayer point is for Nigeria. We're going to lift up our voices and declare that in the name of Jesus, God will overturn every act of wickedness and every plan of evil concerning Nigeria in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you for your word is yea and amen. As you have said, oh Lord, that you would overturn, overturn and overturn. We lift up our nation, Nigeria, and we ask, oh Father, that every act of wickedness, every plan of the enemy against this nation, Lord, that it is overturned in the name of Jesus. Your word says, surely they shall gather, but not in my name. All those who gather against you shall fall for your sake. We decree and declare that every evil gathering against Nigeria, that in the name of Jesus, it is overturned. We thank you, Father, for we know when we call upon your name, you answer us. For you are the God that answers by fire. Our second prayer point is for ourselves. We are going to cry out to God that every evil plan against us, against our family, be it our spouses, be it our children, every evil plan against us that God Almighty overturns it today in Jesus' name. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we bring ourselves to you as well, O Lord, knowing that you are able to do exceeding abundantly about what we can ask or imagine according to the power that works in us. Father, we decree and declare that every evil act, every evil plan against us, O oh Lord, that this day, as we are gathered, O oh Lord, to spray 
that the siege is over. We declare overturning of every evil act in the name of Jesus. Your word says, who can speak? And it comes to pass when the Lord commands it not. Therefore, we decree that every evil pronunciation against us, against our children, against our spouses, every evil pronunciation, Father, we nullify it this morning in the name of Jesus. We nullify it this morning in the name of Jesus. We declare that only your counsel shall stand concerning us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you. We give all the glory to you. We give all honor and adoration to you. Lord, we know, oh God, that you are answered by fire. Lord, let your fire come down this morning. Let your fire come down this morning. Lord, let it be seen that we call on the almighty God, Jehovah El Gibor, that you are the God that fights for your children. For you said the battle is not ours, it is yours, that we should hold our peace. We trust in your word, Lord, we hold our peace this morning as we see the siege being over in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for your kindness. Thank you, Lord, for your word that never returns unto you void, for it forever accomplishes that which you have sent it to do. Blessed be your holy name, Father. We commit this service into your hands as we proceed. Take all the glory, Lord. Take all honor, Father. Take all adoration. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Let's just go ahead and put those hands to Jesus. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Amen. You have done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. Shall I 
you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amongst the gods, who is like you? Glorious in holiness, fearful in praises. Do we want us? Hallelujah.
of the name of Jesus. Let's all go ahead and raise your voice. Sing to him. He's worthy. Our God is good. None can stand against our king. Who can stand against him? Who can compete with this great God? Go ahead and give him praise. Go ahead and exalt him. Oh, Father, we give him praise. Exalt his holy name. Expectancy. We thank and appreciate God for keeping us and for making us see this day. You are all welcome in Jesus' name. You can have your seat. Are there any first timers amongst us? If there's any first timer, please can you be on your feet so we can welcome you. Any first timers? All right, if there's none, are there any testifiers in the house? Praise the Lord. I believe there are a, a, a lot of testifiers here. In fact, we all have testimonies. The fact that we are alive today is a testimony. Praise the Lord. So, the testifiers, can you come one after the other? Our life. 
and I thank God for making me to be here. I've not been here for a long time. And the first testimony, to even see the invitation yesterday, it's also a testimony. That's why God brought me here today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And when God told you, when God told you anything that has to do with life, just know he's the one. Because when God says, you can't remember everything I'm doing for you. I'm giving, already giving my testimony. He says, I try to thank God for everything. Try to be, thank you this, thank you for that. Thank. And I heard the voice vividly. He said, you can't remember everything to thank me for. He said, but there is one thing you will always remember. And I will make you to continue to remember. That I'm the one that is making you to stand. Ha! Huh. I said, Father, you are the one that is making me to stand. And that's an ambiguous testimony. Because so many things must have passed that I didn't even see, I didn't even know. Not just over me. Over the children he has given me, over the family, over the body of Christ, over everything that is attached to me. He said, you will never forget. And I will make sure you don't forget. So every day, when God opened my eyes to see the light of a new day, I will say, Father, it could only be you that is making me to stand. That is my testimony. Please, people of God, just hear me shout. One big hallelujah for God making me to stand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. hallelujah. And the shout of hallelujah shall not depart from your home. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My name is Funola JJ. I thank God for the salvation of my soul. I'm here to testify of God's unfailing faithfulness. Um, I haven't been to church as well in, I can't even remember when last I came here. But in the course, I, I celebrated another year um, a few days ago with so much gratitude to God. And I'll tell you why. In the course of this year that passed, aside from the fact that I lost six of my childhood friends, I had a domestic accident, which was very, very fatal. This hand that I'm holding, using to hold the microphone, it came out of its socket twice. Not only that, it was totally fractured, and the possibility of me using the hand again, like I am using, was very, very slim. But I held on to God, because I, I mean, the Bible says, those who know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And I just kept, you know, talking to God and saying that I know that you're a faithful God. And he did, he saw me through. My hand was hanging from, I think, July to October, but it didn't deter me from, you know, doing anything I wanted to do. I just took my mind off it, knowing that my God was able. And I'm here to testify that indeed he is able, that I can do practically everything I was doing before, and I'm so grateful. And um, in, the, in the course of it, after, I decided to take a course, you know, in um, London School of Economics, and I, you know, I was like, nothing the enemy does really matters to me. And I testify to God's faithfulness that not only did I complete the course, I came up tops with an average of 97.6%. Wow. <laughs> in fact, my children said, mom, you're very abnormal. Who gets 100% in their courses? In, out, of eight, out of nine modules, I got 100% in seven modules. And I thank God for his faithfulness. So I just give all the glory to God. For those who don't, you know, we have challenges in life. But honestly, trust in God. Don't look elsewhere. Don't look unto man. He is faithful irrespective of what people say. Irrespective of what people, you know, think. 
So I just give all the glory to, to God. I'm super excited for his faithfulness. And I know the best is yet to come, not just for me, but for us all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to give God the glory for my life, for keeping me alive from that last year. I'm seeing this year again. During the corona pandemic, I was really, really, really afraid because we learned that there was no cure for it. I didn't know how I was going to survive last year. But God helped me. In terms of money, food, everything. And I thank God I didn't contact the disease. And the people I lived with did not have, they didn't have the disease. None of us contacted the disease. I'm here to thank God for keeping me alive, for divine health, for his mercies, for his favor, for his goodness, for all that he has been doing for me, for all that he will yet do. I prophesy into everyone's life that the Lord will continue to be faithful to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I have a testimony as well. I just want to thank God for how he saw me and my family through in 2020. It wasn't easy. Just like our sister said, the coronavirus um, you know, period was really, it, it was tough. But I just want to thank God that he saw me and my family through. My husband contacted the virus, but received his healing. So I just want to thank God for that. For me and my family, at a point in time, we're all down. I was actually having the symptoms, you know, but I didn't even want to confirm to know whether <laughs> it was the coronavirus or not. But I thank God that he saw us all through that season. And um, the Bible says that God delivers us from a, that in six troubles, he will deliver us. And in seven, no evil will touch us. This is my testimony indeed. And I believe that is a testimony of each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Can they testify us, be on their feet so that um, we can pray? In Jesus' name. Father, Lord, we thank and appreciate you for these great and wonderful testimonies. Thank you, Father, Lord, for our sister whom you are making to stand daily. And indeed, you are the one making each and every one of us stand daily. We appreciate you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you for the healing of our sister and for excellence, O oh Lord, academically, in Jesus' name. We thank you for our sister also, whom you saw through the coronavirus period in the mighty name of Jesus. We know that it is still ongoing, but we thank you because we know that, Father, Lord, we will overcome in the mighty name of Jesus. We cover these testimonies with the precious blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for affliction will not arise a second time in our lives in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Please, can we listen to these um, announcements? The monthly Holy Ghost service for me with the theme, God bless you, Fife, will hold on 7th May 2021 at the Redemption Camp. Please plan to attend. The FOS will be holding her annual International Women's Prayer Conference. Praise the Lord on the 15th and 16th of May, 2021, here at the King's Court. Our guest minister will be Apostle Joshua Selman. Registration is free, but mandatory. You can ask the ushers for more information on that. Praise the Lord. That's all I have for now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Um, so now this is the hour we've been waiting for. We are going to invite um, our Father in the Lord, who is with us, 
Pastor Lawale to please join us now as we um, go into the ministration. to my name. And they wanted to find out which name is that. I say I feel I've been addressed as Pastor Peter Ayodili Olawale Kurugwini. You know the meaning of Kurugwini? Corona has faithful me. You know, from your testimonies, you will discover a fact about life when you are inside God. That until the tea is immersed, is I mean, inside hot water, you won't know the value of that tea. But when the tea is permitted to be immersed inside hot water, you know the strength of that tea. Whatever is the name of that tea, Tea bag you want to drink. I'm trusting God that by the end of everything, you understand this God in a deeper and greater dimension. Uh, the way you worship God, the way I see God had done us, um, how will I put it? So let's sing with all our heart, with all our soul. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah.
ahead and bless him this hour. Bless the name of the Lord for his goodness and faithfulness and loving kindness. Adore the only one whose I am that I am. Our ever faithful God. Glory be to his holy name forever. Ever loving. Ever kind. The only invisible, immortal, almighty God, the one who lives forever. We are already in the month of May. Four months had already gone. Here you are, alive. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Let somebody say, Thank you, Jesus. Let God hear your voice. Say, Thank you, Jesus. If you are this month, it's your birthday, kindly come up. This month is your birthday. Come out, please. If an angels bow before what a mighty God he served. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. sharing a month of birthday with me to go with the glory. Father, I want to thank you on behalf of this your children. Your grace has been smiling on them. That is why they are kept alive. We thank you for how you've been making yourself available in the affairs of their lives. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your backings. Thank you for the enablement. Thank you, Lord, because of the way you've been resolving certain aspects of your life in your own way. Thank you for making them to witness yet another year. Take all glory. Take all honor. Take all adoration. That day I pray because five stands for grace. That law, more than ever before, you will multiply your grace in their lives. In every aspect of their life, oh God, 
you will decorate them with your grace. Your grace, O oh God, will be what they will be covered with all the days of their lives in Jesus' name. And grace attracts faithful. You will favor them. Oh Lord, you will favor them. I pray, Lord, that from today onward, you will create a conducive environment for them in Jesus' name. And they will serve you to the end. Sickness be far away from them. Thank you, Father, for having answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Pray the Lord. Let someone shout hallelujah. God bless you, choir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. God bless you. I listening to the recording of the last month message and I made it clear emphatically that we are meeting physically today. So I was bound with my word because um, we are having a special program on prayer in which um, I so and I must get him prepared for it from um, around 10 p.m. The prayer ring comes up around 4 to 6. By 10 p.m., I'm expected to have been in my library and prayer room in preparation. So you can see my eyes that is not attractive at all. <laughs> um, but because I've promised that we've met today physically, you know, and the commitment you people put into this particular hour of expectancy has been a challenge to me also, not to disappoint you. I think you put your hand together for Jesus. Put your hand together for Jesus. So when I was, in, I was called upon, is it going to be a factual? Or physical, I say I've made myself, it has been declared that it's going to be physical today. That's why we are here physically. And uh, we are trusting God that, like I told you last month, uh, Corona cannot survive in Nigeria. By the special grace of God, Nigeria will see the end of Corona very, very soon. Very, very soon. What we say, what did we say, what was the announcement that today's message will be? The siege is over. John chapter 6, verse 16 to 21. John chapter 6, verse 16 to 21. I will Read it in the New King James Version of the Bible, NKJV. Now when evening came, the disciples went down to the sea, got into the boat, and went to far the city to Capernaum. And it was already dark, and Jesus has not come to them. Then the sea arose because a great wind was blowing. So when they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near the boat, and they were afraid. But he said unto them, It is I, do not be afraid. May I say before we go on, the siege of fear over your life is gone. Amen. Whatever has been creating any kind of fear or anxiety in your life, the siege is over. Amen. Then, verse 21, then they willingly received him into the boat. And immediately the boat was at the land where they were going. If you consider or you study this particular passage very, very closely, you will discover a scenario there known as the siege. 
They didn't plan to be there in the night. But yet, the storm couldn't allow them to move on time. Then the evening came to meet them there, according to verse 16. And then, uh, that was not all. Verse 17 said, not just an ordinary evening, it was also a dark night. I believe that particular moment, they had longer night than day. So it was in the evening, it was dark. And then verse 18 revealed to us another problem. They were being bombarded with storm. The sea arose because a great wind, great wind. So you could say the disciples were about to be drowned, so to say. But then they should swim because some of them are fishermen. But suddenly you are going to discover swimming could be practically impossible. Why? They were three to four miles away to the river bank. Now, if you are to swim, I believe you should see where you are swimming to. Don't forget it was dark. Let's say they could swim. Where are they heading to? And they, they are four, three to four miles away, not kilometers, four miles away to the water bank. That is the scenario that the Bible has referred to us there. No hope, no way out, or what you were just expecting. Well, it did the end of life. No GSM to call the master that you are being in trouble here. Not at all. No means of communication. But there is somebody who can see far away. Can you mention his name? Let me hear you. Jesus. I can't hear you. He sighted them afar off and then began to do something that no one has ever done before. He began to walk on water. To let you know how hopeless the situation was, when they saw Jesus, they thought he was a ghost. Then Jesus told them, it is I. Be not afraid. I don't know whether... As we have it in Act 27, verse 7 to 8, Act 27, verse 7 to 8, may that there are people here, though they are sailing, so to say, but they are sailing slowly. There the Bible says we have sailed slowly many days. Not one day, not two, many days, simply because of the storm. In fact, when they wanted to go and arrive somewhere, they said they arrived there with difficulty because of that storm. We are here to declare today that the siege that has been wasting your life and time is over. Amen. Let God hear your amen louder. Amen. That the siege that is responsible for your slow motion is over. That sea that will not allow you to move as fast as you will is over. Amen. Come on, say amen loud and clear. Amen. Let me ask you to lift up your right hand to start with say, Lord. Let God hear your voice, say, Lord. In the name of Jesus, every agent of delay responsible for my stone movement, today your time is over. Pray that prayer with all your heart. Every agent of delay responsible for the, my delay in life, responsible for my slow movement in life. Your time is over in the name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Be seated. Let's consider the steps Jesus took in order to put an end to the siege that particular day. And as we are going to discover these acts of Jesus one by one, I'm trusting God that you will not just hear it, but the same Jesus who did it for the disciples here will do it for you also. Amen. Don't forget that immediately he arrived, he entered into their boat, and the boat got to where they were going immediately. Suddenly, something catapulted them. So we want to see what did Jesus do in order to rescue them from wasted life and wasted time. I'm trusting the almighty God. The siege over your life is over. Amen. Number one, Jesus located the time wasters and dealt with them supernaturally. He located what is that thing that is responsible for the siege that is over, that was over the people, his disciples. He didn't just stay where he was. He came down the street and located it. That he when, when he appeared, he thought, it was a ghost. Don't forget, when the Almighty God wanted to rescue the people of Israel, He said, I have come down. You remember in Exodus? I have come down and I discover. Anytime God is about to do something, He will locate the place. It's not a God of trial and error, it's not a God of um, maybe this word is saying, maybe this word, no, no, no. It's God of accurate, going straight to the point, dealing with the matter right from the root. That is the law that we are talking about. I have a feeling within me today that whatever has been responsible for the seat of your life, the law will locate them. Yeah. And not only, not only that, it will locate them, it will relocate them. Yeah. Loud and clear, lift up your hands and say, Father, Father. let God hear your voice. Say, Father, Father. whatever I've been responsible for the siege over my life, locate them today and relocate them in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray that prayer with all your heart. Whatever I've been responsible for the siege over my life, locate them today and relocate them in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. I have a good news for you before you take your seat. That good news is in Isaiah 49, verse 17. Isaiah 49, 17. In the New King James Version, I read, Your sons shall make it. Yeah. Only people are sized, I got what I said. Your sons shall make haste. Now look at the next thing that he said. Your destroyers and those who lay you waste, I go away from you. Let your amen be louder. Say your destroyer. I, I think you should personify it. Personify it. Say, my destroyers and those who laid me waste, so I go away from me. Let God hear your voice. Say, my destroyers. And those who let me waste, say, go away from me. That is what the Almighty God had promised by the special grace of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Lift up your right hand in the mighty name of Jesus. Say it loud and clear. All the destroyers and waste of my life and waste of my time that have been assigned to waste my effort in life. In the name of Jesus. Get out of my life. Go away from me. Pray that prayer with all your heart. All my destroyers, my terrible, terrible. Go away from me. Go away from me. Thank you, Father. 
Glory be to God in the eyes. In Jesus, my fellow's name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Be seated. What did Jesus do that day again? Number two, he supernaturally suspended certain laws in bringing an end to their siege. Supernaturally suspended certain laws. That is when he began to walk on water. Because if we were to wait for a boat to carry him there, and that would be, may, might be too late. So he now acted in a supernatural way in order to rescue these people. That is what you see in verse 19 of John chapter 6 that we have read. In that verse 19, they saw Jesus walking on water. And listen to me attentively. A time when the Almighty God is about to do something, it will supernaturally handle certain matter that you cannot explain. Here, he walked on water. Whatever law you can refer to, you can call it. You can call it the water of, I mean, uh, the law of flotation. You can call it the law of gravity, whatever law. He suspended that law. And I have a feeling within me, in order to put an end to every seek in your life, whatever is that law that must be suspended, it will suspend it today. Yeah. Let your amen be heard in heaven. Let your amen be heard in heaven. Lift up your right hand and say, Oh Lord, oh Lord. I depend on you for the end of my siege. Therefore, all the laws that must be suspended, whatever that thing that must be suspended in order for my siege to be over, suspend them today in the mighty name of Jesus. Suspend them today in the mighty name of Jesus. Suspend them today in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let your hymn be heard in heaven. Amen. You know, whenever we call upon the Lord like this, he answers. It is only before God you can't waste your time. I mean, every minute before God can't. That is the Lord we serve. You may go to the gathering of who and who and have your time wasted there. Because you may not be remembered. But when you are before the Almighty God, every minute counts. So I have a good news for you. The siege is over. Yeah. And then, let's move forward. What did he do again in order to put an end to the siege over their life? Number three, he created hope to feed the space occupied by hopelessness. He created hope. When I was giving you the introduction of that particular incident, they had no hope again. It was in the night. It was dark. The wind was blowing. The Bible referred to it as great wind, great storm. And then they were very far away from the water bank. I mean, can somebody swim for, I mean, to cover three miles, four miles in the dark? Where, where will you head? Where will we are? So there was no hope at all. And I believe all the sacks and we were waiting for them to just jump out of the thing and they become the breakfast or now dinner because it's night dinner in the belly of the sack. One day I was praying to God and uh, I asked God to explain to me the meaning of a particular uh, clause where Jesus taught us how to pray. Lead us not to temptation but deliver from evil. What is the meaning of evil? 
And the Lord spoke to me and said, if we in that situation, that when it comes, all the alternative you think of also means death. All everything. And that gave me a particular situation. He said, let's say you are right there on a cruise. You've been enjoying yourself on Mediterranean Sea, Caribbean Sea, or whatever. Oh, and suddenly it was announced that the chief had been bombed and everywhere is on fire. Everywhere is on fire. You are now to decide. So you remain inside the ship and turn to horses, or you jump to the sea and became the braver, whatever, inside the belly of the sack. He said that is what is called evil. In my mother tongue, they call it Belisi. You know? <laughs> So when no what to think of to do also means death. He said, that God now said, that time you need my divine intervention. That's what Jesus did here. He intervened. And because he brought hope, suddenly you discover that they were delivered, they were saved. I'm trusting God for somebody here today. If you are passing through the moment of evil, so to say, in quote, you will be delivered. The sick is over. Lift up your right hand. Let God hear your voice. Say, oh Lord, in this life, there are days of evil. By your mercy, from now onward, in the name of Jesus, deliver me from evil. Pray that prayer with all your heart. Pray that prayer with all your heart. Deliver me from evil. From today onward. In the mighty name of Jesus. Deliver me from evil. Deliver me from evil. Oh yes Lord. Deliver me from evil. Thank you Father. Glory be to God. In Jesus name we pray. Amen and amen. Let me see it. What did he do that day also in order to put an end to the siege? The time he met them, they ought to have been where they were going to. But they were still living in the arena of past hours. We don't know how many hours, but it wasn't a day. So, this hour there is supposed not to meet them there. It's supposed to meet them in the where they were going. But they were still here struggling. You remember that when Jesus got there, the Bible says the boat was at the place where they were going. Something catapulted them. Something just took them out of film. And they landed here. I have explained to you here before, but for the benefit of those that probably they were not there that time, that I grew up in the midst of diabolical people. Thank God they've never in any way affected my life before Jesus saved me. Not in any way. By the special grace of God. You know, God knows how to keep his own people from being polluted and from pollution. But I still remember my uncle. You know, I met that uncle who put the uh, egg of a dog. You know, dog, that domestic animal. You know, the egg is bigger than other eggs. He put it, he dropped inside the bottle, stout bottle, without breaking. And he didn't cook the egg. He now told me, this is where we... Uh, hide the destiny of people. So when they do that one for a woman, that woman will never have a child. We cut people. Then he told me, you are very young now. By the time you grow up, you will be fortified. In fact, by the time you grow up and you are fortified, if there's any accident at all, 
you are gone before the anything. In no accident. In other words, in my mother tongue, one igbe, igbe agbe o. But I cannot forget what he said. That way I'm going to. He said, and I quote, but when that thing catapults you, it can hang you on a roku tree. It can land you inside water. That is what he said. In other words, the power of this world will never lead you to your destination. But look at that of Jesus. When that thing catapulted them, where did they go? Where they were going? Put your hand together for my Lord. Put your hand together for my Lord. So what did he do here? Therefore, listen to this. He supernaturally moved both the past and the future to a meeting point inside the arena of the present time. I will explain. Inside the arena of the present time. He commanded the past, come here now. He commanded the future, come here now. And he now handed both the past and the future to the owner. Let me explain. Let's say there is a sister, and there are many of them in our churches, who by now ought to have been maritally settled. At this age, according to the calculation, if, it's an, if it is too late at all, he is supposed to have married 10 years ago. So by now, he's, expect, he's expecting to have given birth to three children at least. Three children. But here, this year, is still trusting the law for a life partner. When he ought to have been that than 10 years ago, what does Jesus do therefore to cancel that siege? He will now stand by the fellow. He will now command 10 years ago, meet me here. You remember, he that sister happened to be miraculously married today. She had to wait for another 10 years to have children, to have three. He now command the 10 years ahead, meet me here. He now handed over. That's the reason why when that sister is now married, now give back to a triplet. That, that is what the master Jesus does. And somebody listen to me today, you think the time is come. My life has been wasted. How can I ever meet up again? I cannot ever make it again. Oh, this and that. I will show you very soon that this Jesus is an expert of fulfilling destiny. When he redeems your time for you, that your life is redeemed. I can't hear your amen louder. That's the reason why nobody should write himself off. All what you need to do, commit yourself to his hand. Suddenly, he's going to do something in your life. Some I entered for the first time to secondary school at the age of 22. The first time I knew the four corners of the university, I was already 44. And listen to me attentively. He has a way of going to the past and then going to the future. He knew. I mean, Jesus knows where I'm supposed to have been. In the, if I have to wait for that particular time to the future, then maybe by 80 years, I will be able to find out where I did. I to a music yesterday that, oh my God, some people are highly gifted in praising God. Say, you are the law who breaks protocols. If it is not the law who breaks protocol, how can you think that a man will be a prisoner in the morning and a prime minister in the evening? The name of that young man is called Joseph. I mean, so if you think your life has been wasted, your time has been wasted. Circumstances have penetrated you and they have disfigured your life. They have disfigured your destiny. How can you ever make it again? Let him in. You are going to see God in action. We were just, um, I think last month from the United States, they called me. 
I mean, someone will come in there. So, the journey 2022, sir, I say, what about it? We will come to start from America here. From America, we cross to the neighborhood uh, country, that is Canada. From there, sir, we are going to Brazil Street. From that place, we are going to Brazil. And what do you say? I'm, I'm, I will think about it. Until now, I'm still thinking about it, whether I'll be able to make it or not. That is, I was talking about 2022. We are not talking about tomorrow. So, <laughs> I'm not the one to uh, buy tickets. I'm not the one to, everything is going to be sponsored for me. But I'm thinking about it. Because I don't know whether I'll be able to have chance to go. So, if God were to wait to the time, I mean, it will take a step one another. It did, oh my God, look at Let me explain. You remember John chapter 2, verse 1 to 11. The production of wine in Carnegie Galilee. You remember? Can you please go and Google it when you get back home? Production of wine. During the time of Jesus, you will discover how many days it will take. Jesus Christ himself told us, my time has not come. He told the mother, you remember? But he knew, <laughs> if he didn't do this thing now, these people will be put to shame. The sick of them will be something else. He now commanded the time of that miracle and the future come now. Now, the wine... That are supposed to pass through processes. He now collided everything inside it in a second. Because the wine ought to have been there either a few hours or a few minutes ago. And if they are to, to, to follow the process, they will need another day. So he commanded this everything. We collided the wine, put the water pots here, fed the water now. If for the M says, hey, where have you kept this good wine? So when the almighty God is acting, he is the only one who can never permit a life to be wasted. Even if it's a circumstance that wasted our life, we think too. He has a way. And I'm trusting God for somebody here today. He will redeem your time for you. Yeah. Lift up your right hands. Say, oh Lord. Oh, Lord. Let God hear your voice. Say, oh Lord. Oh, Lord. Let the future miracles that are needed in my life today be brought to me now in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray that prayer with all your heart. Pray that prayer with all your heart. Let the future miracle needed. Now, I want you to pray. I'm giving you about a minute or two to call upon him right away. Is there any situation in your life where you think it has been hopeless. The name of the Lord be glorified your life right now. Go ahead and begin to pray that prayer. Let God hear your voice.
thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say amen louder. Amen. The Lord God himself will answer you speedily. Amen. The siege is over. Amen. Be seated. God bless you. Finally, what did he do that day? And that the revelation with God in verse 21, when he entered into the boat, and the boat got to where they were going. So in putting, that's in number five now, in putting a seat to our hand, Jesus applied supernatural evacuation. Supernatural what? Yeah, he evacuated his own disciples. You know, when there is war somewhere or rumors of war, certain nations will go there straight to evacuate their own citizens from that nation. So here, the Master Jesus made use of super, I mean, spiritual. Evacuation, spiritual, he applied spiritual evacuation. Now, immediately he entered, suddenly all of them found themselves where they were going to. So, if there had been any darkness that had been disturbing their life, that darkness is behind them now. If there is any storm, they couldn't see the storm again, the storm is now behind them. If the water, I mean, the river bank is far away, that was then, not now. So the Lord God has a way, and he had done it for me again and again, of giving you a spiritual evacuation. Suddenly, you just discover that, wait, how come that I overcame that thing? You mean, that problem is a bygone now? That problem is behind me now? That thing is behind me now? He has a way. I don't know whether something had happened to you before, and you ask yourself the question, how come? How come? When you yourself won't be able to explain how come? A time my wife and I, we asked ourselves, how come? I said, that is God. How come? That is God. Because as far as every human being is concerned, you will always meet, and mark my words, always meet a situation you can't handle in life. That is what makes human being human being. It's only God who has no problem. As far as human beings concerned, never believe anyone that he doesn't have a problem. There are problems there, but there's a God who is an expert in evacuating his own people. We just bring them out. And when you look back, you say, how come? I'm having a good news for somebody here today. Very, very, very soon, you will say the tears of joy. Because, because you won't be able to explain how come. In Psalm 107, verse 29 to 30, Psalm 107, verse 29 and 30, there the Bible says, This is our God, make the storm a calm. He make the storm a calm. That, so that the way thereof are still. Then are they glad. Why? What, what have brought their gladness? Because they be quiet. So the storm is gone. That storm is no more there. That is number one that I brought gladness into their heart. The second thing, how he brought them into their desired heaven. You mean, I'm now fulfilling my destiny. I'm now fulfilling my goal. Could this be me? So all those dreams that have dreams, 
I mean, that I've dreamed in the past can come to fulfillment like this, that is why they are glad. And I'm trusting God for somebody here today. It is your turn to experience spiritual evacuation. Where the almighty God himself will catapult you. And you look back, you say, wow, this is God, 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 this is God. And the name of the Lord will be glorified in your life. And the power of the Lord be manifested in your life. Let us solve a problem in a minute before we begin to pray. That day, what actually activated the miracle of that sudden arrival into their destination and that sudden departure from the environment where they were being besieged, so to say. You know, they left the environment where all kind of being besieged have been bombarding them. Miraculously, suddenly, they had a sudden experience of arriving at their destination. What prompted that? What activated that? What brought that one about? Verse 21 is the answer. Let us fit on the screen, please. In the New King James Version, John chapter 6, verse 21. John 6, 21. You see that the Bible says, Then they winningly receive him into the boat. That it happened to be the key, the secret. What brought about that sudden evacuation, that sudden arrival into their destination, they willingly received him into the boat. Before you begin to see immediately and every other thing, as you are living here today, with all your heart, with all your soul, with everything in your life, let him be in control. I'm not praying now. I'm giving you a very, very crucial advice. Let him be in control. Handle everything over to his end and forget it there. It's not a God that will disappoint any man. I was menacing somewhere, I turned on the prayer ring a few days ago. I can't remember the day I said, God quickly accepted himself. God quickly explained himself when he was saying, I'm not a man. He knew all the bombardment we had met with. How again and again human beings had disappointed us. And excuse me, I had been a victim of disappointment from human beings. At times I say, ah, ah. If I begin to tell you disappointment, later on I say, if I don't want to keep myself with hypertension, I better forget about trusting any man. So that particular environmental pollution, so to say, that we have experienced from all men, we now carry the same thing to God. We think God is a man. God says, I'm not a man. I cannot disappoint. Whatever you commit to my hand, you can go and sleep with your two eyes closed. I am not a man. So as you are living here today, trust him. Rely on him. Let him be everything. And, excuse me. When you are before God, never, never attempt a plan B. Never. Let him be all and in all. Let other people say you are a fool, okay? The Bible says the foolishness of God is wiser than men. When let others begin to ridicule you, Jesus, Jesus all the time, excuse me, let him be in charge. Let him take over. Taking over everything. Your worries, your anxiety, your everything, your everything. Your everything. Somebody won't ask me a question. Pastor Lawale, this is how I knew you about 30 years ago. What do you eat? I said, well, you want to hear? I say, yes. I say, I go to bed. 
as a little baby all the time. I mean, what problem can I solve for Christ's sake? Can I solve any problem? The air I'm breathing in, who, who gave it to me? Is it not God? I mean, in fact, when I think I can solve problem, I've made myself God. And anxiety means you think that problem will have been solved by any more by you. It is today that is what brought in anxiety. You know, when we are having fear, when we are filled with anxiety, God is not happy. You mean you can do it? Okay, go and do it. You mean you can tell him, go and tackle it. You mean your wisdom can do anything, go and do it. Let God be God. When they winningly receive into the boat, then they arrived at their destination. We want the sick to be over. Let him take over. That is the secret. That is the secret. And that the special grace of God today, you are coming next month with great testimonies. I, I can't hear your hymn louder. I said with great testimonies. With great, 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 great testimonies. In the mighty name of Jesus. Stand on your feet, please, and bless the name of the Lord this hour. I believe you have been blessed. Have you been blessed at all? Let him know that you are blessed this morning. That you have been blessed this morning. Let him know. Begin to thank him for how he has built your faith today. For how he has established your life today. For how he has answered your prayers today. For how he has manifested himself in your life today. Begin to thank him. God bless him. Give him praise. Give him honor. Give him adoration. Thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. If this aim, you have it in your software, can we please uh, put it on the screen? Um, all to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I freely give. I surrender all. I surrender all. If you have it, can we show it on the screen? want to sing that song. And uh, it has been a common aim, but this morning, I want you to sing with all your heart that are living here today, all concerning your life and everything. God bless you. Can we have it uh, both and uh, so that it can be legible, can be clearly seen? Okay. Thank you, Father. Can we have the instrumentalists? And we want to sing it together with all our hearts. Sing it with, with a deep meaning. We have been singing it before, but this now is a level of concentration unto God. Forgetting about our circumstances, forgetting about what we are passing through, let him be in, let him take over, and so on and so forth. Oh, yes, we are still waiting for...
are certain things I've read concerning the experience of certain men of God that have been a source of inspiration and encouragement to me. One of those is the revelation of dream, one of men of God, a child of God now saw. Uh, and that references according to him, he was walking side by side with Jesus. Then the storm came and suddenly discovered that instead of the footprints of two people, only one footprint of a man. Mm -hmm. Then he now challenged Jesus when that storm was over, that you ran away when the storm came. You left me in alone that storm. And Jesus smiled and told him, that is not true. The footprint you see there is my own footprint because when that storm came, I carried you. I carried you. I surrender. Oh. I surrender. I surrender. up your two hands now and make it a prayer but to you my blessed Savior I surrender home I surrender home thank you Father God glory be to God in the highest thank you Jesus I surrender home I surrender home I surrender home I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Listen, please, attentively. That song we just sang is not just for the fun of it. Something is taking place in the spirit realm. I'm asked to tell you right away that you are coming to testify. Because you're going to prove his almightiness in your life. You're going to showcase his supremacy in your life. He's going to tell you that no one surrenders so unto my hand and be disappointed. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. It's like as if the iron is inside your thigh. God is healing somebody now. It's like iron inside your thigh. Your left tie. Healing is taking place right now. Healing is taking place. Healing is taking place. Please make sure you testify of the healing of the almighty God taking place in your life right now. Right now. Right now. Thank you Father God. Thank you Lord. God asked me to tell a woman here, he said, your home will be set to tea. And that fellow is a woman. He called the, name, the next message that, call, that came immediately is that God asked me to tell you, forgive him. Forgive him. And that him represents your husband. Your home will be settled. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. I can hear promotion. I'm excited, I'm excited. Say promotion. Promotion, promotion, promotion. 
I can hear that stagnancy is over. Stagnancy is over. Be on this for all this year is over. That lady is being remembered now. In your office, you are being remembered. Promotion is coming your way. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm excited. I'm excited. Thank you, Lord. 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 Listen to this, please. Oh, goodness. Thank you. God say you've been laboring. I don't know what level of laboring. But the time is about to come for you to settle. And listen, that is not the end of the matter. The Lord has me to tell you, it will make sure you hear the fruit of your labor. So no, no one is driving you away from that. You will sit down, Kule, and hear the fruit of your labor. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. A lady is here, you find it difficult to further your education. The Lord has me to tell you, I will sponsor you. If you find it very difficult, I will sponsor you. Yes, thank you, Father God. Lift up your two hands and bless the name of the Lord. Your blessing, your blessing, your blessing. Thank you, Father God. Glory be to God in the eyes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's put the basket to the front. We are singing a song together. As that song is a song of praises, then you drop your offering on the basket. We are taking one we put here. Another one. Is that is that okay? Okay. Can we have songs of worship to worship the Lord with? I think you can sing emailer. Emailer. Thank you very much. Emailer. Emailer. Oh, Kaka.
you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Let bless the I mean, pray on this before we finally pray for you. Father, we thank you because you are the only one who answers prayers. Things committed to your hand is safe, becomes alive because of your supremacy and power over life. So we ask, Lord, that all the prayer requests here, it will turn out to testimonies, Amen. to the glory of your name. Amen. We will be very careful, Lord, to give you thanks, to give you praise. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lift up your hands as we bless your life. Practically speaking, concerning your life and destiny, the siege is over. Amen. Spiritually, the siege is over. Amen. Maritally, the siege is over. Amen. In your chosen career and businesses, the siege is over. Whatever is the definition of the any siege over your life, that siege is over. Because you've allowed the Lord to take over. Therefore, that siege is over. By his, faith, by his special grace throughout this week and years ahead of you, freedom will be your daily experience. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we go, are you here today? Or you are watching us online and you've not surrendered your life to Jesus? You heard what we said. And when they willingly received him, then they got to their destination. So if you are here, you want to surrender your life to him, kindly just lift up your hand wherever you are. I'd like to pray for you straight ahead. And all of you. God bless you. I can see a handy. God bless you. And all of you watching online, please make sure you surrender your life to him right now. Thank you, Father God. Eternal God, we thank you on behalf of these, your children online and your granddaughter here. We pray, Lord, that if one has decided at this hour to surrender their life to you, accept them, embrace them, just the way the disciples got to their destination because they permitted you to enter. I pray, these your children, they begin to have their destiny fulfilled from today in Jesus' name. With their names written in the book of life, by the power of the blood of Jesus that have cleansed their sins away, we all make heaven together. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Please fill the form that you have been given and all of you online. Locate a nearby redeemed Christian church of God right there, wherever you are abroad. But if you are in Lagos here, I think it is uh, number three, uh, Keystone Bank, uh, Victoria Island. Number three, Keystone Bank, Victoria Island, King Scott Parish. God bless you. Is, has anyone been blessed today at all? <laughs> Let that fellow shout, Arisande, hallelujah. and pray for our daddy as he has sowed into our lives let's sow our prayers into his life in particular this month of May on the 28th is his birthday so we're going to pronounce the word of God found in Psalm 89 from verse 20 it says I have found Peter Olawale my servant with my holy oil have I anointed him with whom my hand shall be established my arm also shall strengthen him in Jesus name the enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him in Jesus' name. I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him in Jesus' name. 
But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and in my name shall his horn be exalted in Jesus' name. I will set his hand also in the sea, and his right hand in the rivers in the name of Jesus. He shall cry unto me, Thou art my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation, in the name of Jesus. Also I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth, in the name of Jesus. My mercy will I keep for him forevermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with him, in the name of Jesus. His seed also will I make to endure forever, and his throne as the days of heaven, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you for our Father in the Lord, Pastor Lawale. We commit him into your hands, O Father. As he has sown into our lives, O Father, and prayed for us that the siege is over, we declare concerning his life that the siege is over in the name of Jesus. And we say, Lord, that your goodness and mercy alone shall follow him all the days of his life. In the mighty name of Jesus, we commit not just him, his wife, and his children into your able hands and declares that as the mountains surround Jerusalem, Lord, that you surround them in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your goodness and your mercy upon him. Blessed be your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Let's share the grace, please. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom. Have a blessed week.